a few years ago, I bought a DVD box set with a collection of universal horror movies. I enjoyed all of these films on some level, even if a few of them fell a bit short compared to the others. But I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about each of them. These are 8 movies that came out between the years of 1931 and 1954. So let's start with the first one, Dracula from 1931. This film was directed by Todd Browning and was based on the Bram Stoker novel. This film is probably the best film out of all of these. The vampire Count Dracula, played by Bela Lugosi, moves to England and sets up a residence next to an insane asylum. There he feeds on the daughter of Dr. John Seward. This garners the attention of Professor Abraham Van Helsing, who then attempts to defeat the vampire. But the Count has many abilities, and the aid of his insane brainwashed slave, Renfield. The next movie is Frankenstein from 1931. This is the first out of three films on this list directed by James Whale. This is sadly the one I liked the least out of these movies. Much of my dissatisfaction with the film is due to how the story and presentation does not depict Frankenstein as how I understood the book was meant to be read. In the film, Dr. Frankenstein is depicted as a likable guy with an obsession with science, but by the end of the film he leaves that life to go get married and gets a happy ending. Here's to our son, to the house of Frankenstein. <laughs> While Boris Karloff does an admirable job in portraying him, the monster depicted in this movie is just a crazed, confused beast stumbling into murder and mayhem, instead of the introspective individual he is in the book. In the end of the film, the monster is slain by an angry mob of villagers, as a retaliation for him accidentally killing a little girl. And it feels like we are meant to cheer for the crowd, not condemn them. The next movie is The Mummy from 1932. This film by director Carl Fraund seems very much like an Egyptian retread of Dracula, and I am fine with that. The setting and flavor adds enough to this to place this among the top half of these films, in terms of my enjoyment. This time it is Boris Karloff who gets to play a calm, intelligent and hyper-powerful being who controls people with hypnosis. The plot centers around the mummy of an ancient Egyptian priest named Imhotep. He believes that a woman, played by Sita Johan, is the reincarnation of his long since dead forbidden love. The next film is The Invisible Man from 1933. While Dracula is probably the best film on this list, this one is my favorite. I'm a sucker for comedy and this is a really funny movie. Lies from beginning to end. I have a good mind to prosecute the whole lot of you for conspiracy. I shall announce this evening that the whole thing's a hoax and you'll be the laughing stock of the entire country. The Invisible Man! <laughs> Nasty business, this. It's a conjuring trick, that's what it is. I saw a fella make a peanut disappear once. This film is the second on this list to be directed by James Whale. That makes me think that some of the silliness I did not enjoy in Frankenstein might have been silly on purpose. Claude Rains stars as the titular character, and it is clear that he is having a blast in the role. I'll show you who I am, and what I am! <laughs> in the film, Dr. Jack Griffin invents and consumes a formula for gaining invincibility, but he soon turns mad from the effects it has on his mind. Now he is menacing the English countryside, and the police are powerless to stop him. Here we go gathering nuts and may, nuts and may, nuts and may. Here we go gathering nuts and may on a cold and frosty morning. Next up is The Bride of Frankenstein from 1935. James Whale's second attempt at directing Frankenstein hits the bullseye and this film has everything the first one lacked. In the sequel, Boris Karloff's monster is an intelligent and lonely creature, rather than a bumbling oaf. The best scene in the entire film, and probably in the entire box set, is when the monster makes friends with a blind hermit. 
When I was watching it, I was honestly wishing that the movie could just end there and then. But I knew that there would be some tragic outcome that would ruin their rare and sweet friendship. I may go back and just see that part again, and then turn it off, to pretend that is where the movie ended. Despite the title of the film, don't get too excited about the bride's appearance, as she is barely in the film. She is good when she finally gets there, but I suspect they just wanted a catchy title. The Bride of Frankenstein. And now we're on to The Wolfman from 1941. Larry Talbot, played by Lon Chaney Jr., returns to his father, played by Claude Rains. And by the way, while I first thought that these actors were the same age, or that Lon Chaney could even be slightly older, Claude Rains is in fact 70 years his senior, so he could in fact play the father of Lon Chaney Jr. Quite early in the film, Larry Talbot tries out his father's new telescope by looking into the windows of homes in the town nearby. When he sees a lady getting dressed in her bedroom, he naturally visits the antique store she works in, on the ground floor of the same house. She tries to sell him some antiques. He then tells her, What I'm really looking for is uh, something half moon shaped, with spangles on it, golden. Oh, I'm sorry, we haven't any like that just now. Oh yes you have, don't you remember? On your dressing table up in your room. In my room? Yes. Would you mind getting them for me? She is visibly unnerved by the situation, and continually refutes his advances. Still, he insists on them going on a date together. Despite being specifically told not to come, he then shows up later. She has luckily brought a friend for protection. Even when learning that she was engaged to be married, Larry did not stop his pursuit. Now you may think that this sounds extremely creepy and that this is where the horror in this movie comes from. But actually, all of this is played as romantic. Oh yeah, and later in the film, Larry turns into a werewolf after Bella Lugosi, dressed as a gypsy, bites him. But all of that is far less horrifying than the whole romantic subplot. Now we're on to the only color movie out of these eight. The Phantom of the Opera from 1943. This film was directed by Arthur Lubin and it sticks out like a sore thumb in this lineup. It is filled with color, lightheartedness, melancholy and music. It seems like only a select few scenes are meant to convey fright and the mood quickly reverts back to either joyful or sad after that. Claude Rains really is a half forgotten treasure. He should be remembered as well as Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff. In this movie he plays a violinist who gets his face slightly disfigured by acid. So naturally he has to hide out in passages under the opera he used to work at, after killing a music publisher for wrongly assuming that he was trying to steal his original music. Even before becoming the Phantom, this man was obsessed with a singer, played by Susanna Foster. From clues within the film, you can work out that he is actually her estranged father. But an overt reveal of this was removed from the final film. This due to the censors, for some reason, thinking that the whole thing felt very incesty. I have to say that this is something that the censors must have brought to the table themselves, as I do not think that this is something that would have crossed the mind of most people. And here we are at the last film in the box set, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, from 1954. This film came out over 10 years later than Phantom did. Despite that, this film, directed by Jack Arnold, feels much more of a kin to the other movies I've talked about here. In this film, a crew of scientists search for the remains of a fossil, but they instead find the descendant of the fossilized beast. The Gill Man now stalks them from the water, and the crew has to use whatever they have at hand on their boat to defend themselves. But remember, it was really they who disturbed him in his natural habitat. If any of these movies sounded interesting to you, I do hope you go and check them out for yourself. I hope you have a very happy Halloween, and I'll see you in the next video.